So here's my thing. Here's my personal opinion that if you're in the process of paying off debt and you're learning about how to you know, manage your money, do all these correct things, great. I think what you should have on your priority list right now is to have six months worth of expenses outside of your debt tool. So those of you who are practicing the velocity banking concept already, you have your HELOC, you have your credit card, you have your line of credit, PLOC, business line of credit, whatever it is, you should have six months worth of expenses outside of the debt tool. I know many of us move our savings into our line of credit and you've been accelerating. Great. I think you should also have money outside of your velocity banking strategy and that will add an extra layer of protection. Again, this is your personal preference, right? You don't have to do that. I personally, if I'm doing velocity banking, I always have cash elsewhere in my in my case, it's, it's in my cash value life insurance policy. So when I'm combining the two together, I make sure I always keep cash off to the side that I'm not incorporating into the strategy itself. So when you hear me talking about velocity banking, I often say, hey, you know, max leverage, two thirds. You often hear me say two thirds or 66% max leverage of debt tool, <clears throat> right? So if I have a $100,000 HELOC, I really shouldn't borrow more than $66,000. I really shouldn't owe that much more, right? I like to keep 30 to 40% space in my line of credit and in my cash value life insurance policy. So me personally, in my velocity banking and infinite banking strategy, I have a cash value collateral line of credit. So that's my velocity banking debt tools, cash value collateral line of credit, the credit limit, it's 261,000, I owe 67K, right? So if we're doing the math, 261 times two thirds, 172,000. So 172,260 is my max number. Don't leverage more than that, right? That's how I, this is how I manage my personal finances, right? So that's my cash value line of credit. Well, on the IBC side, coming over here, I have 358,000 in cash value, of which I secured 261,000 as a line of credit. So 358 minus 261 is $97,000. So there is still, right, so if we did this, three, 58 times two thirds, 236,280. That's, that's two thirds of 358. So when I got my line of credit, I did the same thing and it made, it made, it still makes all this extra space. So this 97 is emergency fund. I'm not even incorporating that 97 into my velocity banking plan. So again, I, I only owe the 67, the max I will go is this number. In reality, I could go as high as this number, 236, 280. I just choose not to do that. I choose not to leverage myself that heavy. So in addition to the 172 of space in the 261, I also have 97 as emergency, not even incorporating it into the strategy. This is what you guys should be, you should be creating this type of tiered protection when you are leveraging debt, right? And this is the biggest pushback for people that are against leveraging debt, that don't see the value in leveraging debt because they see all this risk, which again, I totally agree with them. I'm like, yeah, if you are afraid of leverage, if you don't understand how to leverage debt to create more income or to offset interest, I don't think you should do this. I think you will mess up. I think you will make mistakes and it'll hurt you more than if you would have just did the traditional method of paying cash for everything, saving money up first, and then deploying it once you've created the capital. But for those that are taking the amount of time required to learn about leverage, how to create positive arbitrage, how to create more income, how to offset interest, and all these different moving parts in your finances, you ought to create protection from yourself. So this is how I protect myself from ever uh, over leveraging.